The user interface may not be the first place many of you think to start modding your game. But in this case, you should. Because one of the mods I'm going to show you in this video is pretty much essential. A flame in your heart. This video is for people who have already installed Tale of Two Wastelands and its required mods. I will also be assuming you did this with the help of a mod manager. I will be using Vortex in this video and you have a reasonable understanding of the modding process for Fallout New Vegas. If none of that is true, I do have videos that can help you out. Please find links down below in the description. The first mod I'm going to recommend is the Darnified User Interface, or Darn's UI as we usually call it. This is a complete overhaul of the user interface, making it a little more workable for people sat at their PC playing the game on a monitor. And it does this by essentially shrinking a lot of the overly large text and icons and giving you access to more information at a single glance. It applies to the Pip-Boy, it applies to the main menu, it applies to uh, crafting, bartering, and even inventory management. It works with the dialogue, which I find really useful because then I can see more sentences, longer sentences, etc. It also works with the heads-up display, as you can see here. It shrinks a lot of the existing icons and it adds a lot more information and yet doesn't take up as much of the screen. Don't worry, you can actually tweak this and remove a lot of that extra information if you so wish. And that brings us rather neatly onto the next mod that I'm going to recommend, although recommend is probably not strong enough of a word. I would call this mod Borderline Essential. That mod is the Mod Configuration menu. What this does is it adds a new option in the main menu called Mod Configuration, and if you click here, you will get a list of mods that you can tweak with this menu. You can probably understand why I consider it pretty much essential. You're going to be adding quite a few mods that probably have settings, options that you can tweak, and the way to do it is use this menu. For example, the Darnified user interface. Let's just say you don't like all those extra things on the right-hand side. You can use the mod configuration to actually remove them. There's a lot of different settings and you can disable, well, all of them. And now it's back to pretty much the default heads up display, although of course with the Darnified adjustments. So yeah, this is definitely a mod I highly recommend. I'm also going to recommend one hood, but for the sake of transparency, I should tell you that I am the creator of that mod so take that into consideration when evaluating my recommendation. This mod gives you complete control over the heads-up display. That's the UI elements you will see on screen during general gameplay. And you might be thinking, but there are no heads-up display elements. And yeah, that's kind of what Immersive HUD is doing. So for example, I've got it set so a single key press will bring the entire heads-up display back. Same key will get rid of it. If I take out my weapon, it's currently set to show the crosshair, the weapon condition, and the ammo count. If I put this weapon away, and then I look using the right mouse button off into the distance, my compass reappears and will remain for a few seconds. And all of these details can be changed in the mod configuration menu. Now, I will mention here, Although the mod is called One Hood, in the mod configuration menu, you will see four entries for it. Adjustable Hood, Extra Hood, Immersive Hood, and Immersive Hood Extras. Um, this is because One Hood is a merging of three HUD mods that I created, and it also comes with some extra options for other mods that you might add. But for now, I'm just going to look at the Immersive Hood options. And for example, I can go along to the hit points, which are currently set to be shown when you're in combat, or if they drop below 50%. 
I could click here and I could say, no, you know what? I want to be a little bit more aware of any damage that I've taken. So I'll change it to 90%. I can also change how long it takes for those things to fade away once these conditions are not met. Now, when I go back, the health meter is now being shown the entire time because I have taken some damage. But as you saw, the compass faded away. As I mentioned, you do have more control than just when they appear. You can use adjustable HUD to actually move the different elements, including the radiation meter. You can hide the brackets. I'm not going to go into details here. I have got a video devoted to that, uh, which I will put in the description down below. The final mod that I'm going to recommend in this video is a very small mod called Cursor unilaterally matched, and basically it makes sure the cursor is the same color as the rest of your uh, menu. Because believe it or not, the game doesn't actually always keep the cursor and the menu color consistent. This mod will actually ensure that whether you're on your Pit Boy or any of the other menus, the cursor always matches the color you've chosen. Now, although I've only recommended four mods in this video, Three of them require compatibility patches to get working with each other. This means the process is a little more complicated than just downloading four files and activating them. However, if you're on Vortex, I've actually made life very simple for you by creating a collection that will download and install all four of these mods and set them up correctly. Don't worry if you're not using Vortex or you don't want all four of these mods so you don't want to use the collection. I will go through the steps that Vortex is doing and show you what you need to do if that's the case. But for now, I'm just going to click Add to Vortex. I'm going to open up Vortex. It's already downloaded the basic collection. I'm going to install this collection to profile Tale of Two Wastelands. Hit Install now. And immediately, it will tell me it's trying to redirect to an external page. This is because the Darnified UI version I'm using is the Tale of Two Wastelands version. I recommend this version, even if you're not using Tale of Two Wastelands. Um, it's very up to date and it does not require any tweaks to get the fonts working. I'm going to hit continue. And the file I'm going to need is the main one. Download the file here. Click this link. Then hit download. Once it's done, it will start downloading the Darnified UI. It will install that. You will get this pop-up telling you that the mod configuration menu is installing. Just hit install. It will then try to redirect you again and ask for confirmation. This is for a compatibility patch that makes the MCM match the Darnified UI. Again, it's on an external site, the same site actually, tailored to Wastelands. I click continue. And this time the file I need is after the words optional file MCM matches HUD. Click that link. Once again, click download. It will do its thing. And hopefully that's pretty much it. We're done. Now I'm just gonna start up the game and check it's working. Once the game loads, you can see the heads up display elements from the Darnified UI. You get a message telling you that the MCM has installed and the heads up display has disappeared because one hood is working. I will just check that it's there. I'm going to go to the main menu, go to mod configuration, and the mod configuration menu is installed. So everything is working just fine. Okay, for those of you who want or need to install this manually, let's take a look at the collections and see what it's doing under the hood. And in this case, I mean H O O D, not. H-U-D. Now, if you've glanced down and looked at this list already, you may have noticed that the top three mods are mods that you almost certainly have installed already because they're essential mods for the Tale of Two Wastelands. They're in this collection because they're also essential mods. They are required mods for the mods that are going to be installed. Do not worry that they appear in multiple collections. Do not worry if mods in a collection are mods you already have installed. That's perfectly normal, perfectly acceptable. The reason I've put them in this collection, even though 
you've almost certainly got them, is just so that the collection double checks. And if for some reason you uninstall one of these mods, this collection will flash a warning. You will be able to see the red, um, the red icon and you will know you've broken some mods in this collection as well. The first mod of real interest is the Darnified UI. And I will leave a link down below to where you can pick this up. The collection redirects there automatically. And you're going to be wanting this file here. And once you've downloaded it, you install it with your mod manager, the way you install all other mods. It's very easy. And whilst you're here, if you're going to be using the MCM, and please use the MCM, pick up this file as well. That way you don't have to come back here later. The next mod is actually the easiest mod, Cursor Unilaterally Matched NVSE Darn UI. If I go along to the page and go to the file section, this is the file you will need to download to your mod manager to use if you are using the Darn UI. If you're not, if you've decided you don't want to use the Darnified UI, but you do want the cursor to pretty much always match the rest of the menu, and why wouldn't you, you'll want to use the vanilla file here. Just install that the way you've installed a thousand other mods. Very, very easy. The next mod the collection installed was the mod configuration menu and a bug fix for it. If you're doing this manually, you'll need to go along to the page and download the main file with your mod manager of choice and also the bug fix. Now, when you try to install the mod configuration menu, what's going to happen is you'll get a little installation box. Just click install. It's detected what user interface you're using and it's made some decisions all by itself. You don't need to actually do anything. However, this does mean you need to install your user interface of choice before the mod configuration menu, which is why it's below the Darnified UI. If you're not using the Darnified UI, it will just put vanilla files in. If you're using Darnified UI, it will put the Darn specific ones. Make sure you install it in that order. If you are using the Darnified MCM, this is where you need to install the file you downloaded earlier from the Tale of Two Wastelands site, this file. You will need to install this mod just as you've installed every other mod. And you need to make sure, if I go along to Darnified MCM, that it loads after the main mod configuration menu mod, after. The collection then installs one HUD plus two compatibility patches for the Darnified UI. Obviously, if you don't want to use the Darnified UI, you will not need these two patches. And if you don't want to use one, one HUD at all, you will not need any of these downloads. You will find the files on the page. Again, all the links will be down below. And you will need the main file. You will need this main file, download and install that with the mod manager of your choice. And if you are using Darns, you will need to use the Darnified patch. You absolutely must use the Darnified patch. I also recommend the Darnified config. What this does is it initially hides all the extra heads up display information so you don't need to turn it off yourself. It's just a quality of life thing because I'm guessing if you're using one hood, you don't want excess information. However, you can turn all of that back on with the MCM. Download all three if you're using Darnified and activate them in your mod manager. What you will need to do is go to the compatibility patches and make sure that the Darnified patch is loading after one hood and after the Darnified UI. That's pretty obvious. And the same is true for the Darnified config. In fact, actually, it's only one mod. It'll be loading after the Darnified UI. If you do that, you will have got all four of the mods that I've recommended installed correctly. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for this video. You should now have an improved user interface, and more importantly, you've got the mod configuration menu installed. Trust me, that's going to be useful if you intend to install more mods, and let's face it, you probably do. I'm already working on another video for mods that are compatible with Tale of Two Wastelands, and I've got many 
planned. You're more than welcome to join me for any of those, and I look forward to seeing you there. But until then, remember, as always, have fun. Father, we'll